Hi, welcome to this session. I am, well, my topic is building a multi-node cluster with gate rest using ARM devices. In this case, I am going to use um, Raspberry Pi devices. <clears throat> well, so welcome. A little bit about me. I am an operating system professor. Um, I am a cloud native enthusiast. I really love the cloud native technologies, not just Kubernetes. Uh, I also do some DevOps app Jalo. Uh, we are working on some chatbots using Facebook and that kind of things. Um, I am also a Linkerd ambassador, and right now I am writing a book about edge computing using Dress Edge computing. Well, uh, maybe you are asking why I need to build a um, multi-node cluster using ARM devices. Um, well, the reason is edge computing. Well. Each computing refers uh, on where the data is processed, and the goal of each computing is process the information or the data near to the source in order to reduce um, latency when this information is going from the servers on the cloud to the client. So you can reduce this kind of latency if you process the data near to the edge and then send it to the to the customer and you are going to reduce latency in that way. So edge computing refers to that part um, and it's something that the companies are starting to use in order to reduce uh, latency and um, speed the process um, and improve the user experience for their products. Edge computing uh, refers to different layers and um, when the information is processed and this have like these four basic layers. The, in the tiny edge, you are going to find uh, the sensors, uh, the devices that are collecting data, um, are called edge devices. On the far edge, these devices are going to send the information to the far edge. Here is where we are going to build our ARM cluster using K2S. Um, so this cluster is going to process the information and then in there, if there is some information that needs to travel to the cloud, it's going to pass through the near edge and finally goes to the cloud layer. For example, um, with this data that you are collected from sensor, maybe you can want to create a machine learning model, but the processing is like a little bit intensive. Maybe you want to process this on the cloud and then the each cluster can download this model and can serve to the clients uh, on or to your customers without too much latency uh, to be processed. So that's the way where you can find in the cloud layer the different cloud providers or maybe on-premise clouds, or your private clouds and these kind of things. So these are the basics of edge computing. Well, some uh, examples of use cases for edge computing could be like smart farms, small gardens. Maybe you want to create a small uh, smart garden in, in your house. Um, maybe you want to create an alert system. Fe federated learning in order to pick data from different so sources, then create a machine learning model with this, all this information that is distributed on different locations. Um, maybe you want to create a geolocalization application or do some geo-tracking like Waze and this kind of applications, but maybe you need to create something more custom for your business. You can also get this information with machine learning, do some predictions, the forecast, and there are different kinds of applications. Uh, also, the companies are starting to migrate uh, to this philosophy to process information near to the edge in order to improve this user experience, as I mentioned. Um, as I mentioned um, well, right now, if you are using containers for your system, the way that build a distributed system using this kind of man's mindset of edge computing could be Kubernetes. Kubernetes could be your platform to create this distributed system using containers and gives you the whole control of all the things that you basically need to build a, a distributed system using Kubernetes. Uh, it's going to orchestrate your containers and manage your deployments, your network, your storage, and everything that you need to create your, your edge system. Well, K3S in the other side is 
uh, Kubernetes distribution oriented to work on the edge? Well, it maybe can help you to connect the things to the cloud, the IoT thing, um, or maybe to process the things near to the source of the data. Well, K3S is going to help you in this way. K3S, uh, all the components comes in a single binary that includes the whole components or let's say the essential components to run a Kubernetes cluster and could be like, well, two binaries, one for the server, other for the agent and contains all the necessary things to run a, a useful uh, Kubernetes installation cluster and includes all the components. If there are something missing, you can integrate these missing components, not like missing, but they are removing, removed because in an edge environment, it's a low resources thing and maybe you don't need the full services that a, a regular Kubernetes cluster is going to use. That's the way that K3S is so smaller, uh, comes in a single binary, has a cool feature that includes you uh, different backends, let's say no, not just only etcd, uh, SQLite, MySQL is going to replace this etcd in this K3S. And you can also deploy your backend on the cloud, let's say on Google Cloud, um, Cloud SQL uh, that is connected to the cluster that needs to storage all the configurations instead of etcd. Uh, could be useful um, in order to have high availability in some way, but you have to have like a nice network connection, internet connection that will build your point of failure. Uh, K3S also includes by default an ingress controller traffic, but you can install in uh, Nginx ingress and, and other things. But you have to be pending if you are using ARM devices that this so bar has to support ARM. You also have some some Helm um, object by default inside the cluster instead of installing things using the Helm bind, uh, the Helm command line um, has their own object on Kubernetes for K3S. Use this flannel for networking and use container default containers. Well, K3S is also a CNCF sandbox project. Um, well, talking about ARM devices, um, they have some balance between processes and energy consumption. It's something that Intel has a lot of power, but increases the energy consumption. That's the reason why the smartphones are using ARM a lot, so it has that balance. That's the reason why ARM is uh, often used for edge uh, computing systems. Um, in this case, we are going to use Raspberry Pi devices using ARM processors. Talking about these Raspberry Pis, you can use right now for in this year, ARM different versions of Raspberry Pis. We are going to use Raspberry Pis version B, 3B and um, um, 4B. The 3B has support for ARM B7. This means that it's going to support 32-bit applications and B8, 64-bit applications. We are going to just use the B8 using the Raspberry Pis for B. Um, and you can also use in this Raspberry Pi different distros, Raspbian, Ubuntu Alpine and, and others, but, but we are going to use Ubuntu. It's more like standard or something that you are going to find on production clusters, not Raspbian, and maybe can give you some advantage in that way. But you can use whatever distro uh, you feel comfortable. Alpine is really minimal, but needs a lot of extra work. Well, in Ubuntu, Ubuntu a little bit, but not, not a lot of extra work. So what do you need to build your cluster, your multi-node cluster? Well, you need fast micro SD cards. It's like the hard disk for your Raspberry Pis. You need like the micro SD cards with the best or the fast read and write, um, read and write feature. Um, you need Raspberry Pi Imager or Valena Etcher to flash your Raspberry Pis to install your distro in your Raspberry Pi. Maybe you want to uh, buy a, a cluster case for your raspberries um, and a small switch to connect your raspberries to the network and an internet connection. 
This will look something like this. I am going to show you right now how the clusters look on real time. I have connected here. Let me show you uh, my my cluster is here right now. You can see my hand here. Well, um, have some switches. I have the switch, the case, some switch to turn to on and turn off the Raspberry Pis, and maybe an HDMI to see what is happening on your Raspberry Pi and really pretty cheap uh, configurations to build your cluster. Um, you have to keep in mind that you have to build all your applications to support ARM. Um, don't worry if you are using containers locally, you can build this, you can use in Docker BLX. And depending how you are deploying your things is the right tool that you are going to use. For the cluster configurations, uh, you can have like a single node cluster that could be like the majority of the cases for edge computing or maybe a multi-node cluster to process some intensive things near to the edge. The cluster, the multi-node cluster on K3S is going to use a master. The, the worker nodes are called agents on K3S. Uh, now you can see how it looks when you are showing your cluster and it's working on the far edge, uh, how the tiny edge um, have your edge devices with sensors that send information, uh, how can interact uh, the cloud layer with, well, this edge cluster in the far edge um, with different cloud providers. The software to install is K3S, Metal LB as the bare metal um, load balancer, Longhorn, and maybe we want to install Nginx Ingress controller. The challenges of using this kind of technologies can be like, well, we have to learn how to communicate the sensor with edge devices, which libraries, with language we need to use. Um, the duration um, of these sensors, um, how they perform uh, on indoors, uh, on weather conditions, um, drastic weather conditions. Um, your software have to support ARM if you are using this kind of devices and how to reduce cost uh, about how to power your devices. So right now, let's create a cluster. These configurations represent um, the cluster that you saw on my camera. I have a local network with, with this uh, network, um, a private network. I have a switch. Some IP addresses are just for reference. Um, the one that we are using is the master, has that IP address, the 0 0.11. 0 0.12, the agent one, and the 0 0.13 for the last agent. Well, this is our my network, and let's going to proceed. Um, they have installed Ubuntu. I think that there's the 21 or 20, or a later version. Doesn't don't worry. The cool thing about installing Ubuntu is that gives you support of V8. Uh, sometimes Raspbian um, doesn't detect this thing or doesn't support that thing. Well, you can try the images of Raspbian they are in continuous update updating process. Um, well, in this case, we are using Raspberry Pi's 4B with four gigabytes. Well, two for four gigabytes and one with eight gigabytes. Um, and fast micro SD cards with 32 gigabytes. To prepare the, the device, um, you have to install Ubuntu, configure the network, you have to enable um, the C groups on your Raspberry Pi. It's like you have to send these kind of parameters to the kernel. Um, so you have to add just this small line at the end of the line that is inside the this command line txt file um you have to configure the host right now we have configured uh, all the nodes with this part well so let's move to the practical part uh, 
we are going to use this uh, small script to install the master node. Uh, it's going to set the IP address for the master. Uh, I am going to dissolve traffic by, by default. Um, it's going to dissolve the service LB because we are using, we are going to use metal LB to provide load balancers. So let's do it. But right now I have all the things prepared. Um, let's connect to the master node. Um, okay, let's set this variable of the master. Let's run the first line to create the master node installation. Just let me fix my chair. Okay, so right now it's installing the thing, one line to install the things. You can even use tools like Ketchup um, to install um, to install K3S and all your cluster. Um, right now, let me see something. Okay, I think that you can see all the things here okay it looks good well let's extract the token that is going to be used to connect the agent nodes well i have to add this line sudo i'm going to copy this this token because it's going to be used to connect my my nodes okay everything right now we can show the notes that are we are using right now um okay there is machine one well the master is called machine one the other notes are machine two and my machine three okay let's move to the to the first agent let's set this variable okay and the master ip another variable we have this this is the ip address of the master node and let's run this line this line is going to connect the node well it's going to start k trace agent things and then it's going to connect to the master node in order to appear in the list of the nodes of Kubernetes. So all the things are working. Let's do it. Only one line to install the thing. Right now, I, I don't have set SSH keys to login without password, just simple installation using a regular password, but you can do it in that way could be more secure okay um, let's see here what is happened kubectl get notes now uh, the machine 2 is being processed uh, when it is ready it's going to show ready here Right now it's ready. Let's move to the last agent node. Okay. Let's see here. Well, here's the part of the master node, as I showed. We are right now in the part of the agent tones connect. I, I have been connected in the master node. I extract the token, then I connect to the agent. So I configure the master token. And right now I am connecting and creating the agents. I am in, in this step. So um, let's create this one. Okay, the master node here. Um, let's create the token variable. And then let's run the last one liner here. And all good is running 
I have a pretty decent um, internet connection too. <laughs> And right now, I think that everything is working. Um, let's move to the master node. By default, the master node with all, with these command line options that I just said is going to install kubectl. So right now, we are going to wait for the third node. It's ready and it's running and it's awesome. And right now, let's move to the next part that we are going to to install metal lb we are going to create the namespace we are going to create a config map that has the configurations where the load balancer are created if you remember we are using this network but we are just using this range of ip addresses just for the for the load balancers yeah between the 240 and 250. So let's run this command line to install metal LB because right now uh, K3S can't provide load balancers. This metal B is a um, bare metal load balancer service. Let's create the namespace. Let's create the config map. This is pretty important, the namespace and this config map. If not, uh, Metal LB is not going to work. And last, install Metal B that is going to read this config map. Okay, right now we have to wait a little bit. We can continue with. Let's wait a little bit. We can continue with Longhorn. We are going to install Longhorn in this way. If you need a read and write many support, you have to install NFS common library in, in your Ubuntu on all the nodes. And finally, you can extract the config map. And last, we are going to test uh, some simple deployment that showed that everything is working. Uh, let's install Longhorn here. Um, just one line to install the thing. Here's going to deploy Longhorn. I think that is too much. Uh, two nodes using four gigabytes and one node for eight gigabytes. It's like a lot of power here, um, but it's really cheap. To implement this kind of clusters. So right now all the things are working. Um, we can see uh, the different namespaces that this thing is creating. Uh, Longhorn is here. It's going to show the different deployments uh, that is working right now and later you can use this these storage classes that this that are installed long home. Uh, so it's installing the things you have to wait for that and everything it's going to take some time just for demo purposes you, we are going just to to install the thing not going to use a long home here in this demo <coughs> and let's see i think that everything is working let's move uh, on this step again well we are going to run this just to test the different configuration and let me show you let's create a simple nginx deployment it's going to be it's going to be um, Provisional, Gem is going to expose the deployment of this Nginx and is going to create a load balancer between the range that we define on Metal LB. And we are going to access this on the port um, 8000. <coughs> okay, so let's see, uh, get the deployments. Here is the Nginx, is up. Let's see the services. It's a service with the load balancer is this IP and this port. 
let's explore this here. Um, I think that is this port. And no, sorry. Is this IP address? Uh, let me complete the thing here. And it's working. So right now you have you sell this load balancer server, this uh, bare metal load balancer service from Metal LB. We are running K3S and all these things, and it's working. So it's pretty pretty easy to prepare uh, your devices to run <coughs> K3S and ideas that you can explore you can um, let's say you start connect Arduino to your Raspberry Pi use kit to connect um, your Raspberry to read from sensor is something that I am working right now or maybe you can use ESP32 devices um, maybe you want to explore the LoRa wireless protocol is really really nice because just low power consumption and you can send data from 2 to 10 kilometers of distance um, so it could be really interesting if you want to explore the LoRa wireless protocol is something that is moving right now around the global world the IoT things and maybe you want to decide or discover different architectures where you can interact with the cloud um, with the cloud providers which services will be better to deploy on the cloud, which one near to the edge on my edge cluster and, and these things. Um, there are some resources that you can explore um, by yourself, the official page of K3S Rancher, um, the official documentation, the slides, if you want to explore my slides uh, from the edge, Let's add my Raspberry Pi. Here is the link. You can copy this. And uh, I think that for that, thank you very much for all. And maybe we can move to the part of the question. Thank you very much. And of course, you can follow me on the social networks here is my email and my twitter follow me on twitter and let's move to the question thank you very much um for this event um about age computing and kubernetes bye people